Hey everybody, Alex, better known as IB Crazy with Video Aerial Systems, and this is a follow-up video to the base-fed whip antenna for Crossfire. After releasing that video, I noticed a lot of you asked me, well, how would I do this on a U.FL connector? So in this video, I am going to focus on the U.FL connector, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer, so hopefully you get a little bit more detail on how this antenna is built on this connector. Just like the previous video, you're going to need a few materials. First thing you're going to need is a jumper. This jumper is made from a cable known as RG178. Now I know what's very popular is 1.13 millimeter coax, and I highly recommend you do not use that. One of the reasons is it's very high loss, and the other reason is it melts very easily. This is a much better cable, much lower loss, much easier to work with. And of course, I got it with a connector pre-assembled. This connector is actually known as an IPEX, or I-P-E-X connector, even though in our industry we typically call it U.FL. If you're having a hard time finding it, type in IPEX, I-P-E-X, and it should come right up. You're going to need heat shrink tubing. 1 16th inch or 1.5 millimeter for your metric guys, 1 8th inch or approximately 3.5 millimeters, and 3 16ths or approximately 6 to 7 millimeters should work about right. You're also going to need some tools, the first of which is a pair of wire strippers. I like these multiple point wire strippers, and I found that the 20 gauge setting was excellent for stripping off the jacket, and then after tinning it and stripping up a little bit further, I found that the 22 gauge was perfect for cutting into the shield. Of course, you're going to need a tape measure to measure it. That's more than accurate enough. You do not need a caliper for this. You're going to, of course, need a soldering iron to solder everything up. And then you're going to need a knife to strip off the jacket of your RG142 cable. So we are going to use RG142 like the previous video. And then of course some way of shrinking up your heat shrink tubing, such as a lighter. So with that, on to the construction. Start off this build by stripping the jacket off of the cable. You can see that I'm doing this progressively at about half an inch or one centimeter at a time. And you can also see that half of it's already been stripped. And thus, I don't recommend attempting to remove all three and a half inches of shield in one shot. Approximately one and a half to two inches at each section makes this a lot easier. Then what you need to do is tin up a small section of cable. And this will allow your wire strippers to bite in and separate it. Now to separate this, I found that the 22 gauge wire setting on my wire strippers was perfect. Just pop it in place, wiggle it, and then pull, and it slides right off. The next step is to strip our 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter heat shrink tubing so that it's about 3.5 inches long. This is longer than the shielded portion should be. Then we'll just go ahead and slide it over top of our coaxial cable and allow the shielded section, the exposed shield, to be exposed. Then notice I'm just shrinking down the very end, being very careful, only the minimal amount of heat shrink tubing is shrunk. Now we'll need to cut our RG142 to length. I'm cutting mine at 2 and 7 eighths inches for 915 megahertz. Now for you 868 megahertz guys, about 3 and an eighth to 3 and a quarter inches is about right, and that accounts for something around 82 to 84 millimeters long. Then you'll have to go ahead and strip the jacket off, and for this, I'm just using a knife. Once the jacket is sliced all the way down, go ahead and remove the cable from the inside. You'll want to remove the outer shield from your RG142, and the best way to do this is simply to push it together a little bit to loosen the tension, and then gently slide it off. Be very careful not to compress the opening, because you need to slide your coaxial cable, therefore your antenna, through that hole. Now, as you come up to your heat shrink, you may need to expand it a little bit, so simply push it from the other end and let it expand and slide right over. Push the RG142 shield down until the end of it lines up with the tinned end of your internal coaxial cable. Then go ahead and pull it good and tight so that it tightly winds around the 1 8 inch heat shrink tubing. Take a soldering iron and very carefully solder the braid to the exposed section of the internal coaxial cable shield. Do not use too much heat here as you do not want to over shrink the internal 1 and 8 inch heat shrink tubing. Now we'll go ahead and trim our antenna to length for proper resonance. For 915 megahertz, the total length from the tip of the antenna to the back should be right at 6 inches. 
For 868 MHz, your length should be about 6 and 1 quarter inches or approximately 160 millimeters. Now you can go ahead and install your heat shrink tubing. When shrinking it down, be very careful not to over shrink the area over the braid. Adding too much heat to the area over the braid can cause the internal 1 8 inch cable to shrink down and will ruin the air gap that inside that makes the antenna work. So I recommend just doing each end of the larger outer coaxial cable and then just leaving the rest be. If you do decide you want to shrink down that outer cable, do it very quickly. Just graze the flame over top and do not let it over shrink. When you squeeze the back end of the cable, you should feel that air gap inside. It is this air gap that makes the antenna work. And there you have it, a U.FL whip style antenna for your TBS Crossfire. I might be crazy, and as always, keep them flying.